Welcome to another episode of Team Anywhere, where CEOs, leaders, and experts at building teams, companies, organizations, and amazing cultures share how to lead from anywhere in the world. I'm your co-host on the East Coast, Judy Bianco Mathis. And I'm your co-host on the West Coast, Mitch Simon. And we invite you to join us to Team Anywhere. Is it possible that there are tools out there where you might be able to communicate as equal to or better than in person? Could a synchronous communication actually be more effective than synchronous communication? Could it actually be possible to have a rich conversation with people scattered all over the world, even when some of those people are asleep? Could there be an online solution to brainstorming creativity and innovation? Well, the answer is yes, and the solution is volley. On today's podcast, we interview Josh Little, the founder of Volley. Josh is fascinated right now with new solutions for communication. On the podcast, you'll learn how Volley could help make your stand-ups more productive, deepen relationships among your new team members, and just make communicating a lot more fun. And when you bring fun into communication, you make it easier to team anywhere. Hello and welcome to another episode of Team Anywhere. I'm your co-host on the West Coast, Mitch Simon, and on the East Coast, my amazing co-host, Dr. Virginia Bianco Mathis. Yes, and now today we've got Josh Little. Josh Little is actually in Utah. Josh is the founder of four, yes, four tech companies. Hopefully I can pronounce these. Maestro, Bloomfire, Quizzer, and now Volley uh, that have collectively been used by Hundreds of millions, hundreds of millions, not billions, but hundreds of millions of people <laughs> and featured in TechCrunch, Mashable, Entrepreneur, Inc., and Forbes. With two successful exits and a third anticipated, he's currently on a mission to help remote tech communication suck less. With his fourth, with, with his fourth creation, Volley, a video messaging app. It sounds like I'm selling something, but it's yeah. it. we're selling Josh Little. Josh, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me. And you pronounce them perfectly. Well done, Mitch. Did I? Did I? Okay, great, great. I, I pronounce yes. entrepreneur perfectly. I'm great. No, I'm yes, yes, yeah. yes. I mean, so, so, so great. So, uh, you, I mean, for those who don't know about all your companies and don't know about the amazing work that you do, Josh, what has you so jacked up on remote team communication? Well, it's just a, a, a space that I've kind of fallen into my whole career. I started out as a teacher and then went into the corporate world and um, started in sales, but then went into to, to, uh, sales training and, and, and corporate training. And um, that kind of led me to my first company, Maestro, which was very much an e-learning company. And then Bloomfire, which was solving for knowledge management, the other 90% of what you need to know to do your job that uh, tr you don't get from quotes training. Right. Um, and then uh, Quizzer, which is kind of the world's simplest quiz tool, which um, blew up and was used by the top publishers of the world. And um, and now Volley. Uh, so so I've very much been thinking about the how to how do you get the right information to the right people at the right time at work? That was very much the the mission of of Bloomfire. But now with Volley, it's very much in the right way, uh, especially with your team being anywhere, um, which is, you know, uh, we all went remote and uh, suddenly we all realize all of these communication bottlenecks. And the only two ways that you have to communicate are the same ways we had uh, hundreds of years ago, even in caves. You can either type or you can talk. You can write on the cave or you can sit around and tell a story. Um, we have more evolved versions of those in that called Slack and Zoom, but it's still just more evolved versions of the same thing and each of them have their own problems. So with Volley, we're very much trying to create a new creature, a new way to communicate. We haven't had that opportunity in a, a long time, especially at work. Just, I'm just imagining now that the, the caveman and the cave woman sit in the cave going, we need to invent Zoom, but we just don't have internet. <laughs> No. no, but we skipped. We'll just, we'll just right on the cave walls until until we've got the technology. We skipped totally the uh, the, the the fire, right? Yeah, the, fire. The, 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 just, right. Who needs fire? No, when, no, no. Zoom. I know. I'm sorry, Josh. So, so Josh. Okay, what I really well, everyone wants to know about Volley, but we're going to get to that. 
What I want to know is what you said you were a teacher. So how did you go from being a teacher to becoming a serial entrepreneur? Yeah, well, it's not a common path. Uh, I, when I so I'll start with where I grew up in in rural Michigan. Um, the opportunities that were before me were either work at the prison in my hometown, or work at the power company like my dad did, or I saw teachers at the school. Those are the yeah. three options I saw. So I chose teacher. And realized really in my first year, it just wasn't going to be my thing. Um, although I, I felt like I was a pretty good teacher. Um, I felt like there was something else. So it, I really, when I, I taught in public school for one year and tried to figure out what could someone with this skill set do in the world? And it turns out sales, um, because they're kind of the same skill set, just aimed at different goals. If you can mm -hmm. convince 11th graders to not burn down the school, you can also probably convince someone to buy a thing. Yeah, um, yeah, that's good. <laughs> right? So I, I was pretty good at sales and, and did very well at my first two companies. And and because I had the teaching background the, the and because I was a top salesperson, they were like, hey, why don't you teach everyone else how to do what you're doing? And I'm like, oh, yeah, of course I can do that. So it, that that's kind of what brought in the the training or, or the learning aspect, getting in learning and development in the corporate world. Now, three Fortune 500 companies kind of made the jump to each, and and that's where really scratching my own itch um, uh, started my first company. Um, I was trying to build an e-learning program. This is like 2003, 2004. The tools that we have today were not. Uh, anywhere near with, uh, you know, with what they were. <laughs> I'm saying that sentence wrong, but um, you get the idea. We didn't have the tools back then. So I was trying to bring in a 3D animator and a videographer and and all of these different contractors to build this e-learning program. And it was like a full-time job. And I was like, man, there should just be a company that just does this, that you can hand mm -hmm. your binders and at the time your CDs to, and, and they could like make e-learning out of it. And I couldn't find that company. So I left and started that company myself. And and that, that was Maestro. And today Maestro creates content for some of the best companies in the world, yeah. Netflix or Microsoft soft and, and whatnot. We started very much in medical where I came from, Stryker Medical Device Company, um, medical and pharma. Um, but that's kind of how I made that transition. It's not anything I expected to do or certainly was, was trained for. So what, I, what I'm interested in is, is uh, you talked about the itch. What is the itch that you're scratching um, when it came to thinking about Volley as a, as a team communication platform that sucks less. Yeah. So we've tried to scratch that itch at my last three companies. We've tried to go remote. Um, we, 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 we read Jason Fried's book, you know, remote. And then we think, Oh, we should do this. And then we do it and we all go remote. And then we, we, we realize, Oh, we don't talk in the same mm -hmm. way that we used to it. Like communication just suffers work, suffers, things move slower. Um, we couldn't figure it out. We've tried each company. We, we've settled in on the whole work from home Wednesday thing mm -hmm. at, mm -hmm. at Quizzer. Um, but I've tried to do remote for a long time and I've not been able to work largely because of communication. So when, when we talk about an itch, it's allowing communication to flow as freely or more freely than it did when we were in the same proximity together, which is, is challenging when, like I said, you, you really only have two options. You either... You can either type uh, or some, when I say type, I mean like Slack or chat or email, or, or you can talk. And when you choose to type, you're choosing to do something you're naturally seven times slower at. We're elite athletes at this thing called communication. Uh, even the least of us is an elite athlete. And for that reason, we all run into this instinct like, ah, we just need to talk. We need to get in a room. Um, and when we do, and that happens with everything, it happens like when you know you're going back and forth in Slack 42 times, chatting your face off or writing a book of an email. We just, you're just like, eh, we just need to talk. And when you do, the only opportunity you have is, you know, if you're remote is something like zoom, which means it has to be scheduled, which means, you know, your calendar is now full or you're back to back or you're, you're zooming all day. And, and when you do that, it's interruptive. Um, so you, you and you have to stop what you're doing and get in the same place and deal with technical difficulties and listen to each other on one X and on all of these things. So each of them typing and talking kind of have their own 
problem. You have to pick your poison. And with volley, we're very much trying to pull the best of them into one place. So with, with volley, we take turns just like we are in this conversation, just like you do in any conversation, except you record your turn with video. And when you do that, it allows some magic things to happen. When you allow a conversation to exist asynchronously, you can take time to think before you respond. And research shows that if you take even three seconds to think um, before you respond, this is educational research, um, you're going to generate a fundamentally better better response. Um, And you can listen to the other person on 2X and you can cancel your volley and restate because you know what you just said, what came out of your mouth could be said better in, in such fewer, t- uh, such less time. So there's all kinds of magic or superpowers that happen when we allow the turns in a conversation, which is going to happen naturally, to be broken up and be taken asynchronously. So that's that's what we're trying to do is kind of take these two worlds, talking and typing, and make a new thing, which so, we call volley. So volley is, <coughs> excuse me, from what I'm hearing is, so you're gonna you're going to. Um, you're going to record, instead of texting me, you're going to record yourself with a video talking to me. Then I'm going to get it on my end. I'm going to listen to it when I, when it's convenient for me. And then I'm going to record my video and audio and then send it back to you. And so we're, we're kind of having a conversation, but it's, it's being interrupted by, by the, the time between us sending it to each other and, and determining what our, you know, what other commitments we might have at the time. That's right. That, that's yeah. why. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's the, the beauty of texting, which is we can take it whenever we have a moment, and the richness of talking, um, which is all that you know, tone of voice and uh, body language can give us. So it's kind of trying to combine the best of those two things. And so uh, the the companies, if you, you maybe you can share the companies that are using your product, or maybe not. Um, but I'd love to know what what the users. Uh, you know, what, it, what's, where's the data? What are the yep. users finding by using Volley uh, um, in addition to, or as, po- as opposed to Zoom and, and Skype and, and all these other things? For sure. Uh, well, you can go to our website, volleyup.com and see users. It's full of user testimonials. Ah. Um, and you, there's, yeah, companies you would expect like Techstars and Google and Amazon and companies you'd recognize. But I'll tell you, the, the companies getting the most out of Volley are, are companies you've not heard of or not heard right. of yet. They're typically small teams trying to do big things. Stakes are high. Therefore, communication matters. Mm-hmm. And every interaction counts. Often relationships are new. I think Simon Sinek just launched a video where he, he talked about, hey, we're, li- we're working on borrowed time here because we're, we're living on the existing relationships we had before the pandemic hit, right? Uh, and developing okay. new relationships in this new world is much harder. It's much different. So, so that's why people like startups are flocking to Volley because relationships are new and it's hard to establish a relationship on Slack or on Zoom. And with Volley, it does just sort of feel natural because those that conversation flow. So th- that's the the prototype of the typical user. Now we have you know thousands of use cases. We have a couple thousand teams using Volley at this point. The product's relatively new, uh, but enough data to to share what we're learning. Yeah. So uh, we're we're seeing some really cool things. And the, the main three reasons these teams are using it is to improve communication because they they feel like video is a better form of asynchronous. They increase connection because we can now talk to each other as if we were sitting next to each other and then reduce meetings because a lot of the things you're doing synchronously just don't need to be done synchronously. There's still a lot of good reasons to meet. Still a lot of reasons to get together on a zoom or in a room, but for everything else, there's volley. That's the idea. You know, this reminds me, Josh, of when I was working at Nokia. So I I worked at Nokia when, um, when, when I started there um, and I would, talk to my friends like, yeah, I'm, I'm working for a mobile phone company and people go, who needs that? And then, right. you know, and then as, as, um, as the phones developed, then we said, Hey, let's use this thing called texting because they're using it in Europe and people go, who need that. And then we came in this thing called MMS, which nobody even knows what that means, but was basically sending a picture through a text mm-hmm. and you know, it was went from who needs that to everyone's doing it. It sounds like volley is going to be, you know, I'd love to hear your prognostications, but it, it sounds like it's so 
easy to use and makes so much sense. Once you wrap your head around it, that that would almost replace texting uh, because it's it's so useful and it's so it's so effective. I don't know what what is, what is your thinking around that. Well, that's the entrepreneurial challenge I have here yeah. is it is a new thing. It's a new category. It's a new creature. And like we haven't had something like this in a very long time. Um, so it does take a moment for people to wrap their brains around it. It's not right. something you can just say in a sound bite and they're mm -hmm. like, oh, I get that. I know how to use it. It takes a minute. It takes a podcast for somebody to kind of, right. oh, yeah, that could be powerful. So yes, users, people who are using Volley, um, like the typical path is a team will start using it for stand up because it's something you can replace. It's a thing that you know that you have to do every day. And instead, yeah, why would we all, why would we schedule a stand up? Why don't we just deliver our updates in the morning and everyone can listen to them in 2x, skip the ones that don't matter to you, and, you know, re listen to the ones that do matter to you and then jump in and have side conversations while all this is happening? Yeah, of course we're going to do that. So that's an easy one. They start using it for stand up and then they start thinking, oh, we should use this for our weekly updates. We should use this for brainstorming. Why are we having one-on-ones that are, why aren't one-on-ones on demand and ongoing? Why isn't it just a conversation? Oh yeah. And then it just kind of expands to the point where you're getting quickly, Mitch, is why are you texting me? Why are you calling me right now? Just follow me. It, like it's it's all of the good of that text or all of the good of that call. All right, with none share of the with bad. me. Let me interrupt you. Share yeah. with me how you do brainstorming. Uh, for it, sure. Uh, it sounds a little bit, if you, to me, it sounds like if I use Volley for brainstorming, it's sort of like the Adelphi method where I add something and then I listen to that and then the other person adds something. Is that? Right. Isn't that what brainstorming is? Like yeah. we're, we're yeah. building, we're riffing, it's improv, right? But for someone like me who does not think well on the fly, I'm an introvert, um, I never have a good idea in front of the whiteboard if someone else is there. Like I can riff and we can have the conversation, but it's the moment I walk out of that room. It's the moment I get in my car. Oh, there it is. There it is. That's the idea, right? So Volley just creates enough separation for that to happen. And it might just be 10 seconds that you need to kind of really think without the pressure of someone looking at you. And and let it be stated, there's there's an unspoken 200 millisecond pause in conversation that we all have across all languages and cultures. 200 milliseconds is the golden pause. If you wait 600 milliseconds, that's less than a second before you say something after the other person stops saying it. And I know you feel this pressure as a podcaster because you don't know when your guest is going to stop talking. Therefore, you're forming your response while they're talking. Therefore, not fully engaged in what they're saying because you're trying to think of the right thing to say and come back. This is what happens while brainstorming for me is I'm trying to think what they're saying and how to respond and whether that's off topic or not and where, where we should go. And I, I don't know that I'm able to get to my full creative self. But if you give me 10 seconds, 20 seconds to just kind of sit back and think. It's like, oh no, we should go this direction. And then, yeah, maybe it's two minutes, three minutes, five minutes. It doesn't matter. Um, we're, we're getting to the best solution we can um, and allowing the time that it needs to take to simmer. Some things need to take overnight. So sometimes we really do need to sleep on things and that should be okay. Just because we had a meeting doesn't mean we have to come to a conclusion in that meeting. But that's, yeah. Yeah. Right. The conclusion yeah. should should be made or the decision should be made when it naturally needs to be made. There's mm -hmm. there's natural constraints to every decision. And maybe it's OK that that we come to that conclusion tomorrow. But I love I love your the reasoning. I love the concept that you, as you said, you're going to have to wrap your head around. Mm -hmm. Now, you take the person who gets energized by all the voices at the same time, yeah. they may say, wait a minute, wait a minute, this is not for me. I need, you know, to, for me, that's not the flow of ideas. Yet I would counter in favor of Volley that it's because of all the voices that a lot of times the ideas don't get out there, that only the loud voices get out there. You're right. And we waste a lot of time on quote unquote, unuseful, sometimes stupid <laughs> <laughs> kind of input. Um, so 
it's a habit. It's, it's going to be a new habit, almost a new skill. You're totally so, right. And wow, you just invited me into nerding out here a little bit on this topic. But kind of the, the research I've been doing on, or not the research, the reading I've been doing on group conversation is just fascinating. In a group of four, 70% of pe- two, two people do 70% of the talking. In a group of six, three people do 60% of the talking. In a group of eight, those same three people still do 60% of that talking. Wow. So, wow. so as the group expands, it becomes less of a group dialogue and conversation where we share the time equitably and more of an audience listening to a couple of people have a conversation, right? We've all been on the outside of a conversation, whether it's a, a dinner party or a, at work in a meeting, we've all felt on the outside and not really able to overcome, as you say, Ginny, those those loud voices. Uh, I just can't compete with that. And I, 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 I stumble over my words like I am now, yeah. and I don't know yeah, what yeah. to say in the moment. Oh, right, thanks Josh. for sharing that research. That's cool. Okay, Josh, <clears throat> research time. Yeah. What is the data that you're finding with that quote unquote team of six or eight that is communicating over volley? Anything different? Well, everyone has an equal opportunity to hit the record button in volley. Do they? Do they? Yeah, they do. They do. Um, and it, it, what now culturally, right. you may okay. not feel that, right? Um, and that's that's a cultural problem with the team. But volley at least gives you the opportunity and, and therefore kind of levels the playing field of input because in a brainstorm, I'm not great, honestly. It, it, and I'm not building volume just for me. There's a lot of people like me. I'm, I'm not great in, in the room, um, uh, but I am great outside of the room. I'm great when I'm alone in a cave, when I have time to think, when I put my hands on the keyboard, that's when my brain starts working, right. not when I'm eyeball to eyeball with you. And I know not everyone works that way, but it, it does separate and, and level that playing field of inter- interaction, whether it's group conversation or brainstorming or just a sync up or an unblock, it, it, it allows anyone to jump in and, and help out. Now, of course, there's going to be cultural dynamics of, of teams and things, you know, that, that are, are part of just the human uh, experience that, that we're not going to be able, able to overcome with a piece of technology, but we can go a long way, I, I think. And that's what I'm saying. And, and there's, I think, um, back to the culture thing, an education for here's the kind of culture we want to have. Everyone input push the volley button and be part of this. Half of you, we didn't hear from. So I guess you're going along with this. So a a certain amount of responsibility also. This bad behavior. In a more blatant way. It's yeah. It's so ingrained in us. It's so like this meeting culture, which is formed out of kind of classroom culture. Like you, you can't speak up. You shouldn't speak up. It, it's it's all time and place based culture that we've that we've come from because we've there's there's in a classroom there's thirty kids in a room we can't all speak at the same time so who are the kids that get to speak either the smartest ones or the loudest ones right and and therefore that's what happens in the corporate world as well we kind of have some dynamic and and those of us who fall behind kind of get used to not not speaking up or being called on or having to speak up or having the right thing to say when we when we are called on so tons of bad behavior. We could spend hours talking about all of it, right? Um, but just acknowledging the the physical constraints have created a dynamic and we need to react to it, which I, I think is very smart. In fact, this morning I recorded a volley to all of our users, um, which is all about volley etiquette. And it was all about, um, you know, the top do's and don'ts. Some of the things from the old world transfer over, some don't transfer over, like greetings, like salutations, like being obsessed with your background and what it looks like and yeah, being looking perfect and in, in your image and perfection. Volley's raw. It's authentic. And so I'm trying to help users understand it. it's okay if your kid walks past banging a drum. Just sing along. Go with it. Flip your camera around. Show us what you're making for lunch. Show us the, how long the line at Chick-fil-A is. 
this is life. It's these little things that make the, the connection. It's not the work we do together. It's the things in between the work that bring us together, that, that connect us. And it's okay if it's a little more raw. It's okay if it's a little more human. Your team will love you for that, for that vulnerability. And if they don't, you might have the wrong team. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, you, the, um, I, love, uh, I love the philosophy behind the product. That, that's one thing I love. The other thing I love is, is uh, when we uh, have a podcast with you a year from now, and we're going to have part of the U.S. population saying, volley me, volley me. Instead of text me, it's going to be volley me. As, as, you know, like Kleenex. It'll be so, so cool. And of course, the Volleyball Association of America is going to come after you. <laughs> that's, that's, but I have a challenge, and, and, yeah. and when you, when you look, this might be in terms of you being a serial entrepreneur. How will this do you think morph into, add to, be just another thing, another great tool for leaders to use up against artificial intelligence? Um, being able to, I can just walk into your room and sit down and have a chat with you in a virtual kind of way. Right. Well, I mean, I think Patrick Lencioni said leaders lead in meetings. Um, and I, I, I don't, I don't know that that's true. I think more true leaders lead in interaction with their team, which is what you're saying. That's because you, are you really leading when you're standing alone in your office by the whiteboard? No. Are you really leading um, when you're, you know, checking your emails? Maybe, but only to the extent that you're interacting with your team. So, if that's true, if we believe that leaders lead in an, only in interactions with their team, which largely historically has only happened in meetings, which is where Patrick is going with that, right? Yeah, okay, I'm with you. Now you now go remote. You just made it a lot harder to interact with your team. You used to see each other in the wall, in the parking lot, at lunch. You used to do go go to lunch together. You used to be able to pop into one another's office. You can't do any of that anymore. Um, and Volley brings in a new way that's actually better than popping in to my office because you might be popping in my office. You have something to say. You pop into my office. I'm writing the last line of the manifesto. I had it. And you just you just interrupted me. I'm not going to be able to get that back for 25 minutes, according to That's research. Great. Okay, great, so I, great question. Example. I want to turn the conversation a little bit. You, um, you're on a, um, you're on a mission, you're on a mission from God. You're on a mission to really, really support virtual communication. Uh, my question is, do you believe that fully remote companies using tools like this have a competitive advantage over those old people who actually meet in rooms together and and breathe the same oxygen. Well, we already know that that remote work or companies that can hire talent from anywhere have a competitive advantage, right? Just being able to hire talent from anywhere, being able to hire the kind of talent that's interested in that, you already have a competitive advantage. But you have a disadvantage because your communication now sucks and it's it's hampered compared to those who are in proximity in the same time and space. And that's what Volley's bringing back is now the ability to let communication flow naturally and, and even better, in my opinion, because that last point, the last line of the manifesto, I don't have to interrupt you. I can say what I need to say, move on with my day. You can write the last line of the manifesto 20 seconds later, get back with me. I don't need it. I don't need an answer from you in this 20 seconds. It's okay that I get the answer in, you know, 20 seconds, 20 minutes later. It doesn't really matter to me. Um, but all that matters to me is I have this nugget. I, I want to share it with you. I want to get your reaction. I want to check in. I want to, I, Hey, did you follow up? I, I want to sync up in some sort of way, but that doesn't need to be time or place bound anymore. And Volley lets the communication with still with high fidelity, all of the tone of voice, body language, everything a video can give you, which is what real life can give you, um, without the interruption. And, it's and forcing, that's the hard thing to wrap. Forcing better communication, I believe. Because as you Say said- Say more. Why do you think that? Yes, that, that um, one second, few seconds separation, where I'm now going to become more centered in my dialogue, forces me in a way to say things in a clearer way, mm -hmm. um, in a more straightforward way, with the right intent. Whereas in a room, I believe we get sloppy. 
yeah, we get sloppy, our emotions get involved, um, things come out wrong. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of Volley is you just, if things are coming out wrong, just cancel. That's Go right. for a walk. <laughs> Go I walk can. around, cool off a little bit. You don't have to respond right now. That's you can perfect. respond in 30 perfect. minutes. Perfect. Right. right? So, um, another, another question. Um, in addition to Volley, because you've been looking at this remote work um, situation you've, and you've created so many great tools. Are there any other suggestions that you have for a team that is either forced to be remote forever or is considering going remote forever? Is there any other suggestions that you have to enhance that team's effectiveness and performance? Well, probably a lot off, off the top of my head. Um, communication is your culture. Like it used to be, the posters on the wall. It used to be what our lobby looks like. It used to be our, the arcade machine that we have that we kind of pointed to when, when we're in the physical world, right? That, that is culture. But those things really aren't our culture. Like without communication, what is our culture? It's, it's nothing. Um, so communication is a big part of culture and you have to be deliberate about the way you communicate in order to develop the culture that you want. So, uh, you know, Jenny, we, you, you were pointing out that, if you if you allow the same bad behavior to exist on volley, I don't know that you've gotten that much further ahead. But if you state that, hey, we want to hear from everyone here, like I'm I'm going to give time and let everyone contribute. I'd I'd love to hear your contribution by tomorrow at noon or or whatever that is. Or or another one that I just did with our team. Um, we had an engineer. We we have a channel in volley called Away from Camera. It's our version of like out of the office. Um, and you know, we had an engineer who was like, if he was going to pick up his kids in the afternoon, he'd say, oh, I'm going to be out for 45 minutes to pick up my kids. And I kind of had to state publicly, Hey, we don't need to do that. Um, here at Volley. We're, we're enabling a future of working flexibly unless someone's depending on you for that 45 minutes or you're, you're on the spot for an answer. Just go pick up your kids and, and maybe your volley while you're waiting in line, picking them up at school. That's exactly. okay. You know? That's okay here at Volley. And and unless you're going to be gone for the afternoon or for a couple of hours and people would wonder or depend on you, you don't even need to say anything. So I guess my advice is be very deliberate mm -hmm. about the way that you communicate because your communication is your culture. That word deliberate is key. <clears throat> yeah. 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 And I love um, communication is our culture. Uh, I also I also am walking away from what you just shared is, you know, for those business owners or leaders or managers who are saying, you know, we need to get people in a room every day um, for us to be creative and for us to be, to be better communicators. It seems like it's like you would say, well, have you ever seen this thing called volley? Because the, <laughs> because the, the argument of being together starts to fall, <clears throat> starts to fall apart it does. when you have tools that might actually be even better at communicating than when you are in a room. And I'm not just, and I, I'm not saying that you should never be together in a room because there is purposes for that. But it, the argument of we must be in a room five days a week starts to fall apart with better modes, uh, more effective modes of, of communicating for certain, for certain things. And yeah. that's totally being right. forced of this culture. And yeah. Volley adds a whole other dimension to yeah. that. All right. Well, yeah. We are definitely, definitely going to be evangelists. Of <laughs> Volley. Yeah. Volley. So again, how can our listeners sign up and learn more about Volley? Oh, easiest way is go to volleyapp.com. We have act, apps for uh, Android and uh, iPhone as well as Mac and PC. We have desktop apps. So download Volley and uh, invite your team or at least somebody you want to like start using it with and a chat a friend or someone someone you know well just to kind of get the feel for for what it's like, that's that's the best way. And right now, because it's the early days, um, you'll be added to a conversation directly with the team. So you can tell me about your experience, give me feedback, let me know what, how we could make the product better. That will not scale, um, but uh, right, it, right. You know, well, your founder you're, has to take the chance. Yeah, what you're saying, Josh, though, is unlike um, unlike we're going to wait for the head of uh, IT or our CTO to determine that we're going to utilize this thing across the company. You're saying, come on, just go, go download it, use it with one person or two people or three people just, and you can just check it out. And then maybe 
by using it, then you can kind of maybe spread it throughout the rest of your company because it'll be so cool. That's right. It's not going to work if your CIO sends it down from Mount Sinai. We can talk to your CIO next year once there's enough teams in your company using it. And they're like, wait, what's all this going on? Like, yeah, we'll, we'll pull it all together and we'll do a deal with your company. But right now it's free. Just use it. Just try it out with your, your team or a, a couple of people you're trying to move work forward with. Maybe we hear of a lot of people who try to use it with their team. They don't love it or the team culturally isn't there yet. Um, but then they use it for their side hustle. And I love it. That's, right. that's cool, right? <laughs> that's right. That's Great. cool, yeah. And there's, is there any way that people can just reach out to you personally? Um, Volley is honestly the best way. Or you could go to LinkedIn uh, okay. slash Little Josh and um, Little Josh. get me up there. Yeah. Yeah. Little Josh, I like that. Oh, yep. it's Little Josh. <laughs> <laughs> little Josh is <laughs> little. But yeah. dad was Little John, so I'll be really, Little Josh. Oh, Little yeah. John. Lovely. Mm-hmm. Lovely, lovely. All right. Well, hey, this has been so cool. Oh, fun. Uh, really interesting. Really encourage uh, all of our listeners to go just download it and use it. Um, use it with your with your friend, with your spouse, with your German Shepherd. Um, I think it's it's a great, great app. I checked it out. Um, I want to thank you, uh, Josh Little or Little Josh, uh, for coming on this show. I want to thank you, Dr. Virginia Bianco Mathis, for being an incredible co-host as always. I want to thank our listeners for um, tuning in and checking out this really cool stuff. I think I, I really think that this is going to be something a year from now where people are going to go volley this, volley that. And, I'm and, going right and, now. Like, I know what it is. <laughs> well, Great. you said it. Sounds so much better when you say it. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, you know, I'm a frustrated marketing guy. Um, so thank you so much. Uh, please share this up. Ep- please share this episode. Please share volley with your friends. Uh, give us five stars. Tell us how great we're doing. And we'll see you next time on our next episode of Team Anywhere.